I think it's safe to say that everybody knows the fight against cancer is a hell of a battle. But did you know that after what most people consider to be the end of the fight is actually really just the beginning? Cancer never really leaves you. And I'm here to tell you about the mental side of it. The thing that people really don't know unless you're inside someone's head. Let's talk about that. My name is Generally Lost, and I'm here to talk to you about the side of cancer that a lot of people don't realize exists unless you're a survivor. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying I am not a mental health professional, um, and I applaud anybody who is. However, I'm going to be talking to you about my experiences and what it's like from my point of view. So, while I'm not a mental health professional, I think it's safe to say that I can at least share with you my experiences, and I, I'd say, you know, they're pretty spot on for me. Now, other people out there, they might have different stories to tell. But let's dive into this. So like I mentioned, the fight against cancer doesn't really ever end. And I've talked about that in a couple of other videos. I think this is the third video in the series now. So I'm going to go ahead and link the other two videos in the description if you want to kind of follow along with this experience. The first video talks about my personal experience during and kind of around my diagnosis with cancer and my fight. Um, the second one talks a little bit more about uh, going through my wife's cancer diagnosis. And this one, this is going to kind of dive back into my side. Um, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about PTSD. So I actually didn't know this was a thing until uh, just recently. Uh, I mean, I guess I knew, but I really didn't know it was PTSD. I really, for the longest time, thought that that's not what I would call it. I just thought it was kind of the after effects. But it took 25 years of living with them and a trip to my therapist to realize that, yeah. The T in PTSD stands for trauma. And so post-traumatic, I, uh, I think that's fair. Having cancer at six years old uh, probably will do that to you. Um, so what does that look like? What does PTSD in cancer look like? That's a tough one. Now, this is where all of our stories will differ. I'm going to tell you the symptoms that I feel and the things that I still live with to this day. And if you have either similar or different experiences and you, you know, either you yourself has gone through cancer or you have a family member, feel free. Let me know down in the comments. And I want to know what your story is, what you fight. <laughs> Basically, the demons you fight every day, because I know I know you're feeling um, one of them. I actually didn't really notice until I got to take my trip to St. Jude last year. Um, the smell of a hospital is definitely a trigger. Um, or the lack thereof. It was one of those things that I got to go into the hospital and was touring around and I knew something was off. I didn't really know what right off the bat, but it kind of dawned on me as we went further and further. And if you haven't spent much time in a hospital, this might not make sense to you, but a hospital has a very distinct smell and it is very, it's an antiseptic. I guess would be the best way to put it. It has a very clean smell to it, and it's kind of off-putting. And at St. Jude, they have a massive swath of air purifiers that basically exchange air constantly, keeping everything so that it doesn't get that kind of, it's I, not a stale smell, but it's a smell. So next time you're in the hospital, hopefully you don't have to, like maybe, you know, you go there for lunch for some reason. See if you notice. On that topic, there's certain cereals that I still can't eat to this day. As dumb as that sounds, I can't do things that are fruity in cereal. And I didn't realize what this was for the longest time, but I can't eat Fruity Pebbles. And I'm sorry if Fruity Pebbles, if you're out there trying to endorse me. Well, sorry. Um, <laughs> I actually, it throws me back to the smell of hospital soap. and it just triggers waves of just moments of using soap in the hospital, which sounds really convoluted. Why would a cereal do that? Smell hospital soap. Maybe it's not as potent anymore, but this is definitely the case when I was there. 
and then smell some fruity pebbles. It's it's a thing. And I can't do it. <laughs> Unfortunately. I mean, maybe that, you know, moderately saved my teeth when I was younger. But I probably did other things with my teeth, so. Um, and on that topic of food, I truly cannot stand Jello or Sherbert or a number of other things in that realm. And basically it, and actually Pedialyte, Pedialyte cannot do Pedialyte anymore. Um, and that stems from a lot of the prep work that comes into doing all of these tests. Um, there's a lot of things that you have to do in certain tests. And some of that is, you know, either heavy hydration or getting, you know, recovery drinks in you for after the surgery. And that was where the Pedialyte came from. Um, but the jello and all of that, when you have to have a clear liquid diet, like I've had to have almost every other year for a long time, um, clear liquids, that's only so many options. And jello is definitely one of those. And it is a hell of a thing to try to get me to eat jello. And I'm not talking like jello pudding, I'm talking like the clear, obviously, see through jello um, that you'll see in the boxes and supermarkets. I, I can't do it. I cannot do it. And it's nothing against them. It's purely just absolute triggers. 100% every time I try to have it. Um, and that's, it's, there's definitely a thing to be said from those. It's an interesting experience where I just, there's so many different foods that I've used as prep in the past that I can't have. I mean, obviously I can. There's nothing stopping me. But you tell your brain that. And I wish you luck. Um... But kind of moving on from, you know, that area. If you ever have had anesthesia from a mask, it's pretty much a very unused practice nowadays, from what I know. Um, mostly you're going to get injections nowadays. But when I was young, um, a lot of anesthesia was administered through a mask. Um, and it's, it's a very interesting experience. I don't suggest it if you've never done it before, because it's a thing. Um, it is basically oral anesthesia, um, and it, it causes some interesting side effects. And one of them is as you kind of drift off to sleep, you feel like your whole body is vibrating. It starts from your face, obviously, where you're first getting hit with it, and it just spreads through your whole body. And I can't tell you how many times I've either had a dream or I've just woken up from you know sleeping and this this happened a lot more this was definitely more of a younger experience and i've kind of slowly grown out of this this one doesn't hit me as often anymore um but you just wake up and you feel like your whole body is vibrating and it just sends you back because you know what that's from there's there's nowhere else that that's going to feel from like you know completely what that's from and obviously that sends you back to being on an operating table because or else are they going to hit you with that? It's not like you uh, experience this commonly. <laughs> um, but I've also noticed uh, certain places and certain kind of areas trigger me. Um, not usually like just default hospitals, but places in a hospital or driving past certain things that have to do with anything related to it. Um, for a long time, I obviously had to go back through and do you know, studies and testing and everything like that because of how young I was when I had it, the type that I had and, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, and that means going back to the same place a lot. And you build up a lot of memories from that. And ironically, most of the memories from when it actually happened are gone. Um, when you're hit with that much anesthesia, amnesia is a pretty real thing. And there's a lot of amnesia around having, you know, consistent surgeries and procedures where you're out and you're very young. And so you kind of build situations on top of that. And it gets to this kind of continuing feeling of building this train of events that you don't really understand why it's happening because none of it makes sense. None of it attaches to something that you remember. But there's a lot of little things like this where I feel feel like I'm triggered by a memory or I'm triggered by a smell or I'm triggered by a feeling. And you don't really realize what it's from until you deep dive in. And so I urge you, 
if you have had cancer or you've had a disease or something where you've had to have a lot of either amnesia or procedures or surgeries, because I guess this really does stem beyond cancer. It's just, this is where my experience is from. Um, try to figure out where it comes from. It helps. And from the mental health side of it, don't be afraid to talk to somebody. Talk to somebody that is licensed to talk to, to you about it. It'll help you come around on these things because they're very real. And some of them are scary. And some of them are just downright nuisances, like not being able to eat Jello or Sherbert or Pedialyte. Not that I really strive to, you know, fill myself with Pedialyte anymore. That's not really, not really a daily driver. Um, but yeah, definitely make sure you, you do some self checks because it's real and there's no shame in it. It's a thing. It happens. And the more you talk about it, it's probably going to get better. So like I said, if you've had your own experiences or you know somebody who has, I'd be really interested to know what your story is. You know, let me know. Um, and I'm, I'd be interested in kind of, kind of learning because I know what I know and I know what my wife knows. And that's still a pretty closed world. So like I said, I will link the past videos in the description down below and I'll, I'll probably put in some fly-ins or something like that. So you can uh, click on those. And uh, yeah, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see in this series or if you have any questions about my own experience or my wife's. It's something that we definitely don't want to hide. We'd love to help people kind of understand these kinds of things. So again, thank you. And uh, yeah. <laughs>